Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivas, uh, the Carb Addiction Doc, and today I'm going to talk about a mythical, mystical disease that we're just starting to understand, Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is one of a spectrum of um, intestinal diseases, can cover the intestine from the lips to the anus and elsewhere in the body. Uh, it is one of the inflammatory bowel or IBD diseases, inflammatory bowel disease. The two commonly go Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis that primarily affects the colon, can also affect the rest of the body. I'm not going to talk about UC today. We're going to talk exclusively, uh, exclusively about Crohn's disease. We don't understand everything about it, but we know that there is a genetic predisposition, although we don't have specific ideology on what the genes are, but they do occur in particular populations um, that are somewhat genetically homogeneous. And secondly, there is an environmental factor to it. Crohn's disease, as far as we understand it, is an autoimmune disease. In other words, there is something um, that comes into us when we have a genetic predisposition, something that enters our bodies that triggers our immune system to react in a particular way and to react in an excessive way, not just against the thing that enter our body, but then also to have an overreaction and damage parts of our own body. In other words, that distinct line between self and other is confused and the body overreacts and that is Crohn's disease. Now Crohn's disease uh, mostly in the intestine is what we call a granulating dis uh, disorder. It creates granules, inflammatory granules when you look at it pathologically under the microscope and it can involve anywhere from the lips all the way through to the anus. The most common area being at the junction of the small and large intestine. And as a surgeon, as a uh, general surgeon, both in pediatrics and in adults, I have seen a lot of Crohn's disease. In fact, when I was in my fellowship, I wrote some book chapters for a pediatric surgery book uh, for a text with Dr. Arnie Coron about Crohn's disease. Um, and we really didn't understand it very well. Why is this a topical uh, um, uh, discussion right now? Because in April of 2020, a group in Australia um, called the Center for Digestive Diseases, headed by a professor, Thomas um, Borody, has claimed to have cured Crohn's disease. They looked at, I think, 26 or 27 patients, and they've used a cocktail of antibiotics and particular repopulation of the intestine with certain bacteria. And they cl have claimed to cure Crohn's disease. And while I don't have all the evidence, I certainly believe what they've put out there. And this is something that is huge big news to this awfully debilitating disease that affects the entire human body, mostly in the gut. But let me give you my take on what you can do right now from a Crohn's disease perspective. The understanding that we have is that it's an autoimmune disease, that your body is reacting to some foreign thing and cross-reacting with that or overreacting to it. The most likely culprit of course, uh, a cause of Crohn's, apart from a genetic predisposition, the environmental factor is most likely a bacteria or a pathogen that enters the intestine and the body's intestinal immune system overreacts to it where you get this massive reaction of knots of intestine, this thickening of the bowel wall, this inflammation that crosses in the entire intestine and affects the entire uh, intestinal cavity, and it causes strictures, it causes narrowing, it causes stiffness of the intestine, and the waves that normally propel food through the intestine don't work properly. And the most likely type of pathogen is one that is primarily associated with carbohydrates, with sh high, uh, with uh, um, food that contains high amounts of sugar and starch. And this is speculative on my part, but we have enough knowledge to understand this about uh, Crohn's disease, is that probably the worst, most triggering diet a person can be on to trigger Crohn's disease is what we now call the standard American diet, which is 50 to 60 plus percent carbohydrates, particularly processed carbohydrates. 
Now, we know that carbohydrates turn kind of sloppy and they go through very easily. So very often we put patients with Crohn's disease with strictures where they can't get a lot of roughage through there on what we call a white diet, um, which is your rice, your pastas, all the, the white starchy foods and the breads, because they go down to pulp and they get very easily processed and they go through the gut very easily. But that is so the wrong diet to be on. And I really want you to move away from that. The second diet that they love to tell everybody to take is a high fiber diet because fiber gives you healthy poop and diarrhea is a common problem in Crohn's disease, diarrhea and bleeding. So <laughs> the, the problem with fiber, especially uh, 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 macro fiber, vegetables and that kind of thing, it plugs you up. It plugs you up, but the belief by most doctors is that you have to have fiber for healthy for healthy poop. So they're telling all these poor Crohn's patients that they have to eat vegetables uh, and they have to eat fiber, whether it's uh, microfiber or macrofiber, they have to have fiber in their diet. Well, what the gut does, you've got a tight little opening, a little stricture that nothing can get through. Now you've got this big clump of fiber and it's obstructing you. And it's always been amazing for me how slowly over time, how tolerant Crohn's patients are of extraordinary pain. I could take the toughest uh, bodybuilder out there, the toughest tough guy out there, the biggest bouncer, and give them 10 minutes of Crohn's cramping and they'd be crying on the ground like a baby. So my hat's off to the Crohn sufferers for, for living with this disease and tolerating the awfulness of it. But wouldn't it be nice to get rid of it? So number one, get rid of the carbohydrates. Number two is get rid of the vegetables, get rid of the fiber. In my humble opinion, and this is my opinion, the healthiest diet for someone with active Crohn's disease is a carnivore diet a high meat diet, and preferably without a huge amount of cartilage and tendons and that type of thing. Soft, soft carnivore diet. Whether you want to include dairy or not, I would say try dairy unless it causes you a problem. But a high fat, ultra low carbohydrate carnivore diet, in my humble opinion, is the healthiest source of diet for a Crohn's sufferer. Why? Well, first of all, mechanically, um, you are getting everything in from a nutritional perspective without a lot of bulk residue. So even if you've got a tight little stricture, food isn't going to get stuck there. Remember, our intestine works on enzymes. So there are enough enzymes from the pancreas and from the liver and from the bile that you can break down all of that protein. So you don't poop that often, your poops are much smaller, there's not a huge amount of waste that needs to go out. The second thing, if you've got a decent amount of fat content, it will keep the poop nice and soft. And also, consume a ton of salt. Because if you've got colonic Crohn's, um, your salt regulation, your water regulation isn't that good. So eat a high salt, high fat, protein based diet, which is a carnivore diet, and it's the the one with the, the least amount of fiber, the least likely to obstruct you, as long as you're fastidious about making sure there's no gristle, no bones, no uh, um, tendons and that kind of thing in the food. It includes eggs, and if you can tolerate it, it includes dairy. And I would do the dairy experiment. If it doesn't work for you, don't do it. But start slowly. If you haven't done dairy for a long time, condition your gut, gut to tolerate dairy. So... The carnivore diet is mechanically the best diet. Secondly, if there's enough diversity in your diet from a nutritional perspective, you really don't need a huge amount of nutrients and supplements. Crohn's disease patients end up very commonly with short bowel. And yes, if, you, if you're not able to absorb all of those nutrients, you need to supplement either intravenously or to take supplements. But hopefully we can prevent you from getting to that point where you're having all these surgeries. So... Um, uh, having a carnivore diet that is enzymatically broken down, that is absorbed fairly high up, you don't need a huge amount of intestine to absorb that diet. But don't just go pure protein. Make sure you're getting a decent amount of fat in there. And especially the medium chain triglycerides, uh, the medium chain fats, those are, those are readily absorbed into the bloodstream as well as some the longer ones into the lymphatic system. Make sure you're on a high fat um, uh, carnivore diet. The second critical thing for me about Crohn's disease is that 
The bacteria that populate our intestine come from the food that we eat. The bacteria that populate our intestine come, comes from the food that we eat. And although I don't have, have absolute evidence of this, the most likely candidate triggering bacteria come along with vegetables and with carbohydrates. So when you put yourself on a carnivore diet, the type of bacteria, the type of funguses, the type of uh, um, viruses, yes, they all occur in our intestine, as long as you don't have parasites in there, the, the microbiome that comes along with a carnivore diet is antichromes. It doesn't trigger the immune responses intensely. Now, if you have to take steroids, if you have to be on immunosuppressive medications or salicylates of some sort, they work to a certain extent. But what they're treating, they're not treating Crohn's disease. They're treating your body's reaction to an environmental factor. And part of the goal of Crohn's disease, particularly in our pediatric population, is to try to get them off all these really, really bad immunosuppressive drugs, particularly in the COVID era, it makes you much, much more likely to have a bad outcome because of the immunosuppression. But you want adequate nutritional absorption. You want to live a cramp and pain-free and obstruction-free life as best you can. Um, and you want to be as drug-free as you can be. And if you tolerate a carnivore diet and you stay away from vegetables, it is the single best thing you can do for yourself to fix all of those issues. Now, we're waiting to see what that Australian study does and, and what antibiotics and what bacteria they use to repopulate the gut. But my prediction is they're going to be carnivorous type, carnivorous associated bacteria. And yes, courses of antibiotics may be necessary to eliminate, to, to reduce your microbiome, to eliminate and reduce the bacteria you currently have in your gut and then repopulate it with a carnivorous type diet. That would be my approach. And I know it's way out there. It's way radical. I'm going to get all kinds of flack from a variety of different people. But the reality is this, folks. What, we, what we're doing right now, the current conventional therapy just ain't working. And as a surgeon, if you have Crohn's disease, I'd much rather keep my hands in my pocket than keep slicing out bits of your intestine until you're left with short intestine. Do the best you can to do this experiment. And that's what it is. It's an experiment. But try the carnivore diet. Let's see if it makes a difference. And I'd love your feedback. I'd love your comments. But the current conventional therapy ain't working. And surgery as a last resort is not a good option. Sometimes we have to. In fact, everybody that has Crohn's disease at some stage is probably going to have some sort of surgical intervention. But man, if we can get rid of the fistulas, if we can get rid of the uh, knots of disease, if we can get rid of the malabsorption, wouldn't that be nice? Let's see if we can recondition your microbiome, reduce your autoimmune response to a vegetable-based and carbohydrate-based microbiome, and get your Crohn's disease into remission. Can't cure Crohn's, but you can certainly get it into remission. Feedback is welcome.